You see, vibration and attraction go together. Attraction is a secondary law. Vibration is the primary law. Everything vibrates. The law of vibration decrees that nothing rests, everything moves. We're talking about a universal law. And these are not man-made laws, so they're not going to be changed by man. There is an absolute law that energy will always move into form. It moves into form, through form, and back into form. That is a law. That's a perpetual transportation of energy. It's one of the first laws of the universe. Now, there's only half a dozen laws, and everything else is, like we talk about attraction as being a law. It's a secondary law. It's not a primary law at all. Primary law is vibration. And of course, the only thing you can attract are the things that you're in harmonious vibration with. So whatever frequency you're operating on, that's what's going to dictate what you're going to attract. You already have within all that's required to attract, literally. You already have within all that's required to attract whatever you want into your life. When you get on the right frequency, you start attracting it. And you cannot stop it coming to you until you change the frequency. It's like turning on a radio station. Whatever's on that frequency is what's going to be broadcast through your radio. Well, whatever's on the frequency you're on is what's going to be broadcast through your life, like the, the actions and the results. It's all an expression of that. It's all about the mind, and it's about your marvelous mind. And we've got to get this straight. Most people do not understand this. I have people say, well, I understand it. Listen, if you really understand it, check your results. That, that'll tell you. By their fruit, you'll know them. It's the best advice. Check your results. See, you can know something intellectually but not know it. You can know it intellectually. You stay here and you read this and you'll say, well, you could repeat it. But the results aren't there. Why? You don't get it yet. You've got to get it on a subjective level. It's got to become part of your paradigm. When it's a part of your paradigm, it'll manifest in your physical world. And if it's not part of your paradigm, it's going to just stick in your consciousness. Now, what you've got to realize is that you started out as a little kid prior to school, learning, develop the intellect. You went to school, and it's all about the intellect. That's the whole deal. Develop the intellect. It's not about the intellect. Some real dumb people, intellectually, build big organizations. You can build an organization all over the world and you might not be very bright intellectually. There's people that can neither read nor write, they're functionally illiterate, and yet they build multi-million dollar organizations. How come? That's what's operating in their subjective mind. It's a subjective mind that's manifesting in your life. If you don't like what's in your life, get your ego, get your intellect the hell out of the road. If you don't change your subjective mind, you're not going to change anything. Think of this for a moment. You already know how to do better than you're doing, but you're not doing it. Everybody does. See, the part of our mind that knows things and the part that controls our behavior, two different parts. That's right. So let's talk about your power, your mind, and your paradigm. The paradigm is the programming in the subconscious mind that controls our behavior. Your subconscious mind must accept everything that's given to it. And that's the universal mind. That's what controls the vibration you're in. Whatever information you impress, you must accept. It has no ability to reject. Now think of this. Your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. Whatever you impress, whether you imagine it, whether you hear it, read it, if you get emotionally involved in it, it's real. You see, it's what you impress upon the subconscious that controls the vibration you're in. The vibration you're in is the frequency that you're operating on. If you are operating on a negative frequency, you're going to feel bad. Feeling is a word we invented to describe our conscious awareness of the vibration we're in. If you have been stuck, if you have had a difficult time altering your income, if you had a difficult time attracting into your life the relationship or the business that you want, it's because you're on the wrong frequency and you're using the wrong tools. You're going by what you see, hear, smell, taste, touch. Look at what Einstein said, he said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind is a faithful servant. This is so true. 
We've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. What is the gift? Your higher faculties. You have perception, memory, imagination, reason, intuition, and the will. These are all high mental tools. Through imagination, we can zip ourselves onto a higher frequency. We just use our imagination and build a picture of the good we want. And then we hold that picture with our will. The will is what gives us the idea to focus, to concentrate. I said, if you keep looking at that, carry that around and look at it, I said, and you let that sink right into your subconscious mind. And you can do this through imaging too. I said, when that is impressed upon your subconscious mind, that image must move into form. Not maybe, not sometimes, it must. That's an absolute law. The subjective or the subconscious mind is totally deductive. In other words, it has no originating capacity. It cannot change anything. Whatever you put in, that's exactly what starts to move into form. The conscious mind is the imaginative mind. The subconscious is the universal mind. Now the body is the instrument of the mind. It is actually the instrument of the mind. And we've got to understand that. Now, our imagination, there's a power flowing into our consciousness. And through our imagination, we build the image of what we want. This is the dream, I see what I want. And I've got this beautiful dream. I impress it upon the subconscious and it turns into a desire. So you don't get what you want, you get what you desire. Waddles pointed out in the Science of Getting Rich, the desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within, seeking expression without, through your actions. Well, that desire is expressed through the instrument of the body, because the change is the vibration the body's in. The vibration causes you to act, and the action sets up an attraction. And it's the action attraction that alters the results. Now think what we're saying here. The desire alters the vibration. The vibration changes the action. The action sets up an attraction. And that's what changes the results. Just curious, how many people created their day this morning? Ah. You know why you didn't create your day? Because you don't believe it's possible yet. You see, if you knew it was true, you would wake up every morning excited to create your day, right? So how come nothing new ever happens in our life? If I mean the quantum law works, and we know that it does, then how come we keep having the same relationships or the same jobs or the same circumstances in our life? How come it's so routine and predictable that it seems that Newtonian physics is the law? Because we haven't mastered this idea called observation. By the way, the average human being loses their attention span six to ten times a minute. How good is our observation? That's why only a few subatomic particles actually pay attention to our mind. You know, maybe paying attention and concentration and observation is a skill. Just like tennis or golf, and you can improve it if you keep practicing it. But we have to begin to put the rubber to the road. We have to take this information in some way, apply it to our life, right? Otherwise, it's just good philosophy, and nobody's changed from anything. Now, when we can take consciousness, self-awareness, and move it away from the body, the environment, and time, we no longer have to live by the laws of the body, the environment, and time. And when we're able to do that, we begin to open the door to walk into the quantum field. We have survival, and we have creation. And creation falls under the category of learning and experiencing. And survival falls under the category of responding to the environment so much that it then becomes, listen to this, it then becomes the environment that is creating our reality. Did you hear me? Because as the environment pushes the circuits in the brain and we respond to those environmental stimuli, the body becomes prepared for the threat or the stress, which then causes the brain to think a certain way, which then creates the same reality in the future. So we're these human beings with these big brains, but we're living in the rudimentary part of the nervous system that's based on survival. 
And by the way, 90% of the time that we're awake and aware, we're living in survival. You know, responding to the environment, allowing the environment to determine our internal state. And the, and the, and the confusion we have as human beings, you see, the present moment right now is created from the thoughts of where? Right? So then the thoughts of now are creating what? So most people, though, they say, oh, I'm going to sit down and create money. I'm going to sit down and create wealth. And they sit down for 10 minutes. They get up and they start looking in their bank account for the, for the transfer. <laughs> and then they say what? Didn't work. But you know, we Americans, by the way, are the most difficult audience to talk to. We go to South America. We go to Europe. We go to Asia. People accept this. But Americans are so desensitized to so much stimuli. They get, you know, 2,000 channels on their television. They have opinions about everything. They're into convenience. If your internet connection doesn't come up in 30 seconds, you're like... <laughs> and so if, if, you know, we don't get what we focus on in our arrogance, we all of a sudden say it didn't work. Well, you know, the quantum field works. It's us that don't work. And as we begin to develop the skill of paying attention, we're holding on to an observation, by the way, independent of the environment, independent of our body, independent of time. And by the way, those are the heroes that we fall in love with, isn't it? Whether it's Martin Luther King or William Wallace, Churchill or any of those guys, you know what they said? They said, my observation matters. And I'm going to hold on to this thought, and I don't care how long it takes. And I'm going to hold on to this thought, and I'm not going to compromise it for anybody. Nothing in my environment is going to cause me to let go of my belief. I'm going to hold on to this observation, and I don't care what it feels like, because I'm accepting this more than I'm accepting anything else. And you can do whatever you want, but this is what's more real to me. And when we have that skill of observation, don't you think that the observer is going to start getting on board? Don't you think that's possible? So we have to develop that skill. We have to develop that skill. And because we're so prone to convenience that when it doesn't show up the same day within a matter of moments, we discount its possibility. Why not fall in love with an abstraction? Something that you haven't experienced yet. But if you can put all of your mind into that abstraction, don't you think that that abstraction will be your future? Don't you think that's possible? And don't you think you'll wire your brain to be exactly what your future dictates? You see, we can't get anything in our life that we're not first wired for. You can't be wealthy unless you're wired for wealth. So once we're wired for it, implicitly wired, non-declaratively wired, when we've wired it so much that we don't have to think about it anymore, that's the moment we are it. And that's the moment it takes no effort to have the side effect of who we are as a mind show up in our life. Does that make sense? So the question is, who are we going to rehearse ourselves to be every morning? Can you rehearse in the morning your greatest ideal and activate those circuits? And as you rehearse those ideals for yourself and activate those circuits, won't they be the platform of who you become? If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the old memories of the past and you will be predictable in your life. The quantum model of reality is, is about causing an effect. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you're empowered and feel it, you're beginning to step towards your success. The moment you start feeling whole, your healing begins and when you love yourself and you love all of life you'll create an equal and now you're causing an effect and i think that's the the difference between living as a victim in your world saying i am this way because of this person or that thing or this experience they made me think and feel this way when you switch that around you become a creator of your world and you start saying my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life and now that's a whole different game and we start believing more that we're creators of reality. The greatest gift that you've ever been given is the gift of your imagination. Your imagination is yours 
to be able to do anything you want with. You can place any thought in there with the awareness of I am. So your imagination is the greatest gift that you've been given. And you can put anything in there. No one can tell you what can be there or what can't be there. Einstein said, imagination is greater than knowledge. The second thing is that you have to learn to live from the end. Whatever you have placed into your imagination, you have to act as if it already, already were your reality, independent of what anything or anyone else says. The third of these principles is the principle of, I call it, assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You must be able to uh, feel it because every time that you feel something within your body, you give a instruction to your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind is the part of you where you do all of your living. You want to redo your subconscious mind. Now, tonight and every night for the rest of your life, I want you to take the last five minutes before you go off to sleep and realize that you are about to program your subconscious mind. All right? Your subconscious mind is most at home when you are unconscious, when you are asleep. If you spend the last five minutes of your day, which so many people do, reviewing all of the things that you don't like, and all the things that didn't work out, and how terrible you feel, and who abused you, and who was mean to you, and who said this, and they did this, and you're constantly doing this kind of thing with your mind, then you are programming your subconscious mind that when you awaken, because you're now about to marinate for the next eight hours in your subconscious mind. And then when you awaken, you will rejoin the universal subconscious mind, the mind of God, from which we all originate. We're all just individualized personal expressions of that one thing that we call the Tao, or God, or divine mind, or soul, or spirit. But the Tao that can be named is not the Tao. So you want to be real careful about how you program your subconscious mind. This is from the book of Job. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. Job 33, 15 and 16. When you are slumbering on your bed, he opens your ears and seals your instruction. What you place into your subconscious mind as you are about to go into this deep slumber is all dependent upon what you do the last three or four or five minutes before you go off to sleep. You want to place into your imagination whatever you have placed into the I am that that I spoke about earlier. I am well. I am content. I am peaceful. I am happy. I am prosperous. I am abundant. I am God. I am God. I am God because at the basic core, each and every one of us are just that. And when you start having that burning desire, the intensity of the transmission that's coming out of your brain that you're broadcasting is very high and the power is very high. And because you have a burning desire, you're going to be thinking about it all the time. So the broadcast is very frequent. The duration of that broadcast is longer therefore should come right into your experience somehow. You don't need to know the how because the law of attraction will make it happen. How does the law of attraction make it happen? It basically will create and put into your life events and circumstances that you can't even imagine to create what you want. It will move mountains to put into your existence what you're asking for. The law of attraction has to work because it's a law. It works, period. So it will affect virtually hundreds of thousands of different variables and start shifting things around that you're not even aware of or thinking about to create a situation where it will be in your life. You don't have to know how. 
Think about a radar screen. Most people live their life looking at their radar screen. And they're looking at what they can see in the radar screen. And this is why people fail. Because they base all of their decisions and beliefs on what they can see in the radar screen. We have a, a, a you know, $50,000 in credit card debt. How can I pay that off? I'm looking at my income, I'm looking at my expenses, I'm looking at my prospects for getting a, a new job or getting a raise. There's nothing, there's no way that I can pay off my credit card debt. It's impossible. All you're doing is you're looking at what you see on the radar screen. Now, if you imagine that the radar screen is this small screen, maybe about three inches in diameter, I also want you to imagine what's off the radar screen, what's outside of the screen. The screen can only see a three inch diameter. But I want you to imagine that there are a hundred feet of, of additional area outside the radar screen. The actual area is a hundred foot diameter. But you're only seeing a three inch diameter. You see, the vast majority of what is available is off your radar screen. You can't see it. You can't even imagine it. But once you start activating the law of attraction, everything outside the radar screen starts shifting and moving. There can be virtually hundreds of thousands, if not millions or billions or trillions of variables that start moving and shifting because you have transmitted a vibration with power and intensity for a long duration. Everything starts shifting and everything starts happening and rushing towards you. What you want, wants you. It has to, by law, start coming towards you. And what the universe will do, because of the law of attraction, is it will move mountains, it will create events and circumstances and put people in your life to make what you want happen. And it always is in methods and ways that you can't even imagine because it isn't on your radar screen. You can't even see it. So stop looking at the radar screen. This is the biggest problem people have. And this is why Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind of man can conceive or whatever you desire, you can have it as long as you believe you can have it. That's paraphrasing. His actual quote was, whatever the mind of man can conceive and bring itself to believe, it can achieve. So, I mentioned that there was one thing that will stop the technique from working. So let's go back to the technique and I'll give you the blow. I'll tell you what's going to cause it to stop. The technique is you define your dream, you define what you want, you get a burning desire for its achievement, you really want it, want it, want it. That allows you to transmit that frequency with intensity and power. When you have a high desire, which means you want it, want it, want it, want it, want it, you will have a long duration of transmission. Because every time you do this, it gets better. And every time you do this, your connection to the field gets bigger. And every time you do this, the particle flow happens more freely. And every time you do this, your ability to manifest and create what you want in your life goes up. We always talk about knowing what you want, seeing what you want, having that burning desire, but then feeling good right now, even though you don't have it. And that's the magical place to be. Because if you're always wanting it, you'll always be wanting it and never get it. But whatever you want in life, you can want it. Yes, I want it. But then step back and feel good right now. And when you want something, not for your own ego or self, but for all things change. When your want is love based instead of dark side based, everything changes. So where's the block? The block is 
if you don't believe that you will get it, that stops it from coming in. Two reasons why. Because when you don't believe you will get it, the duration of the transmission won't be very frequent. And when you don't believe you will get that, the intensity and power of the transmission won't be very strong. And when you don't believe you'll get it, you are in actuality putting out a counteractive transmission, which is saying, stay away. So you have intention, counter intention, being broadcast simultaneously and they neutralize each other is coming, but being pushed away at the same time and it isn't coming into your existence. Does this make sense? And somebody says, that's fine, that's good. Now, the question though is, how do I get the high desire and how do I get the high belief? And I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is, as I went, started this session on, is your first goal is to feel good. You must use your feelings as your guide to see if you are lining up. You must use your feelings to find out if you are in the sweet spot. Okay, so we just have a couple of minutes left. I want to do just a, a it's like if you just close your eyes and just listen to this meditation. <clears throat> it's from the book Three Magic Words. Here's what I'd like you to say to yourself at night. I know that I am pure spirit, that I always have been, and that I always will be. There is inside me a place of confidence and quietness and security where all things are known and understood. This is the universal mind, God, of which I am a part and which responds to me as I ask of it. This universal mind knows the answer to all of my problems. And even now, the answers are speeding their way to me. I needn't struggle for them. I needn't worry or strive for them. When the time comes, the answers will be there. I give my problems to the great mind of God. I let go of them, confident that the correct answers will return to me when they are needed. Through the great law of attraction, everything in life that I need for my work and fulfillment will come to me. It is not necessary that I strain about this. Only believe, for in the strength of my belief, my faith will make it so. I see the hand of divine intelligence all about me, in the flower, the tree, the brook, the meadow. I know that the intelligence that created all these things is in me and around me and that I can call upon it for my slightest need. I know that my body is a manifestation of pure spirit and that spirit is perfect. Therefore, my body is perfect also. I enjoy life, for each day brings a constant demonstration of the power and wonder of the universe and myself. I am confident. I am serene. I am sure. No matter what obstacle or undesirable circumstance crosses my path, I refuse to accept it, for it is nothing but illusion. There can be no obstacle or undesirable circumstance to the mind of God, which is in me, around me, and serves me now. This is the great lesson. Know this within you. When Herman Melville was writing Moby Dick, he wasn't writing about a man looking for a whale. He was writing about a, a man, Ahab, trying to find his higher, higher self. He said these words, 
For as this appalling ocean surrounds the verdant land, so in the soul of man lies one insular Tahiti, full of peace and joy, but encompassed by all of the horrors of the half-lived life. In every moment of your life as you leave here today, you have this choice. You can either be a host to God or a hostage to your ego. It's your call. <laughs>